Are you looking for me? No fatties. Uh, I want it all. No hamsters. I steal watches. No dopers, no smokers, no alcoholics. We don't like to write checks. No Donna Juanitas. We don't like to take out the garbage. No posers. What I'm doing right now is making a movie about World War II. No crazies. Santa Monica and my front porch swing. I'm currently involved in cleaning up toxic waste. I'm not having fun doing it. Hey, Daniel Fernandez here with another crazy card trick. Another crazy card trick. Uh, it is actually a wand. Didn't expect that, right? It's one of these memes. You like that? You know, one of those, uh, but get, uh, stop being gay. You know, hey, uh, gay away. Gay away is Maximus. Uh, didn't work. <laughs> um, so here's a card trick. Uh, it could use any deck. I'm going to be using these uh, at the table cards at the table cards because uh why not you know why not um so uh for this particular card trick we're gonna need a card selected so uh if we have a participant here which we don't because um so we're gonna need a card picked here in a fair fashion so uh, let's say the king of clubs is picked and this card is of course uh lost in the middle of the deck Amongst the other cards, uh, to be lost forevermore in a sea of lost. Um, and now uh, we give another spectator the opportunity to be a magician. Uh, that's right, the opportunity to have a life of loneliness and solitude. We tell them that even though their card is lost somewhere among the middle, uh, even if we're going to mix it to uh, give them a little bit of a confusion, that they, they themselves are going to find the card that the spectator merely picked. So you have the deck spread and another spectator looks in the eyes of the other spectator and, and finally comes across one card and they touch it. And that card happens to be the seven of clubs, which is not their card. Uh, but it's okay because the spectator actually did something more amazing. Believe it or not, this, this seven of clubs is going to indicate to us the position of their selected card. So over here, that's one. That's two, that's three, that's four, that's five, that's six, and that's seven. The seventh card from the position that they touched is the king of clubs, the spectator's randomly selected card. Oh boy, man, don't you love it when we have a miracle? Don't you love it? Where are the, where are the three kings, right? <laughs> you know, where they're at, because that was a miracle. Um, that was a... Oh, fucking. Spooky, scary, scary. Oh, you want to know how it's done, eh? Oh, are well, you just not satisfied with an amazing performance of a clever card trick? Uh, fuck, there's no satisfying you guys. Well, you know what? The least you could do is subscribe if you haven't already or like the video, right? Uh, so this is going to be a little bit uh, of advanced next level card card tricks. Why? Because you're going to need to do my friend and yours, the spread call. Um, does that look better? Or does this look better? You guys leave in the comments below which one looks better. Uh, either with light, the light that doesn't have anything to bounce off of because I'm a fucking moron, or no light. And, uh, and just, um, I think this looks better. Uh, this might look better. Professional. Uh, so here, what's going to happen is you're going to make use of two slights, the spread call and my very favorite technique, the Bill Simon prophecy move. That's right. We're going to make use of both of these moves uh, again, because I like both of these moves. And I think that there's an amalgam of tricks that could be done with both of these slights. Of course, if you don't know what I'm talking about, then this is an advanced card magic well beyond your scope of understanding. Maybe you would farewell to look up here or here or here, or here at my spread call instructional. Um, be on the lookout for that. Uh, so what you're going to do is you're going to have a card picked and controlled second from the bottom of the deck. Uh, I did this using a, a slight of apparent my own creation, uh, although I doubt that heavily because I feel like uh, somebody's going to say, hey, that was in a Marlowe book, or hey, that's my slight, you know, or whatever. Um, but it's, you know, I'll teach it in a future video. Case in point, you control that card second 
from the bottom of the deck. And the easiest way to do this is by just showing the card, getting a break underneath the next card. So when you square everything up, guess what? You have a break, a little bit of a pinky break right there. You guys see that? Pinky break right there below the bottom card of the deck, which you could subsequently double undercut right to the bottom. So now their card is second from the bottom. You see that? Yeah, that's you interrupting my shit. Whoa, look, Ma. No hands. I could do it. No hands. Uh, well, actually, yeah, you are using hands. Uh, so you just get their card second from the bottom of the deck, and that's going to be the position you need to be in to spread coal their card after the prophecy move. Yeah, woohoo. So that's, uh, that's pretty much the, the method. So you're going to have another spectator look in the eyes of the spectator that picked the card initially and try to pick up on what card they picked. And of course, they're going to be wrong because they're going to touch any card and you're going to do the prophecy move with the card that they happen to touch. So let's go over the prophecy move for what has to be the 12th time. You're going to have the card spread. You're going to out jog one card just like this. You see that? That card's out jogged. If, if it wasn't out jogged, it'd look like this, but it's out jogged. So it looks like this. <laughs> huh. You're going to grab everything above the card and turn it over. Just like this, you see this? And you're gonna do the ever-present thumb move of using your thumb to turn this card over and draw attention to it and go, oh, the queen. Now, of course, what's gonna happen is that your left hand is gonna sneak in like a spider and place those cards on top of that card. But you see what that does is that that has cut the deck without the spectator being aware that a cut took place. So now their card, which is, the, I'll leave it face up for, uh, explanation's sake. So they touch whichever card they want. You turn it over. You have cut the deck. Now placing their card not directly above, but somewhat above the card that the spectator has touched. Oh boy, I'm so excited. So what this allows you to do is say, oh, that was that your card, sir? And of course, the spectator that initially touched the card is going to respond negatively. And here's how we fix that. We're going to spread to that card and we know that the spectator's card is going to be not the card above the card that they touch but it's going to be the card above that one because remember we control it second to the bottom what this allows you to do is to call this card using the spread call technique you see this because if it was this card over here that you've controlled directly to the bottom it's going to be kind of obvious that you're doing something but because of this card you're going to have that cover and that's going to allow you to spread call this card and put it at the appropriate position. So we say, oh no, you see, you actually did something more impressive because you touched the five. See, if we count down five, and of course this card, which is the spectator's card, is riding along the back. Can we get that in focus here? Can we get that in fucking focus? So what's gonna happen is that you're gonna count five cards. You see that? So that's one, that's two, that's three, that's four, and that's five, of course. Remember, their card is riding on the back. So when we square it up, that places the card that they picked exactly where it needs to be. So now you can turn this over, show that they have managed to touch the card that indicate the correct position of the card that the spectator picked. So it becomes a little bit of a, what, how did I do that? And it becomes infinitely more impressive. Uh, so one more time, all you're doing is a spread call. So assuming the spectator's card is the Jack of Clubs, you have another spectator touch whichever card they want. Let's say it's this one. You're doing a prophecy move right over here. Uh, this would be a scenario where you could ask the spectator, sir, an ace has a value of 1 or 11. Which one would you want? And of course, uh, depending on what they pick here, if they pick uh, 1, all you got to do is spread call this card underneath the ace as you square it up. Spread again and say, okay, fine, 1. We'll go with that. And now you could show the jack of clubs to be the card directly under uh, the card they picked. If, of course, they picked 11, uh, you need to call the card to the appropriate position. But... All you're doing is combining the spread call and the prophecy move. And you have a, an amazing trick you could do to anybody to show them your magical abilities. Yay. Uh, so that's the trick, guys. I hope you guys enjoy it. I hope you guys practice it. I hope you guys uh, do well with it. I hope you guys take it to church and marry it um, and then have a lot of kids with it because condoms are not uh, appropriate, I guess. 
under certain religions. So I'm going to go figure out different ways to use a Nintendo Switch to get views on YouTube. Ah, <sighs> boy. You know, sometimes. Sometimes you wonder about the look in your eyes. Is there something inside you? Is there a feeling burning deep inside? 